Today we talk about what to expect at your first visit at your fertility appointment. I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. Everybody hates seeing the doctor. I'm a doctor and I hate seeing doctors. And the last thing I want to do is see a doctor to have a baby because I thought this was going to be simple that we just, you know, have intercourse and we have a baby. And so having to go to the doctor to have a kid is already a little bit defeating because you feel like no one else needs to do this. And then you have to talk about things that you normally wouldn't talk to people about. And you have to suspect that there could be something wrong with you or your partner. And this can be very daunting and emotional. So what I want to talk about today is what to expect at that visit, what not to expect, and set expectations that are realistic, but also prepare you for your questions for the fertility doctor. It's interesting because when I saw the fertility doctor, it wasn't to know if I have infertility, I already knew I had infertility. And I kind of wish I would have seen the doctor because it probably would have been easier. But instead, being the smart guy I thought I was, I'm like, I want to do a semen analysis. And so I just ordered myself one and did one. And it came back really poor. And at this time, I'm not a fertility doctor. I was just a OBGYN uh, in residency. And I remember having so many questions. And at that time, I didn't have the answers. And that's how a lot of people feel when they even do tests online or do tests at the store. They feel like they kind of know what's wrong. And then they go down the rabbit hole on the internet, but they don't have answers to their questions. So really the significance of the first visit is really to talk about those questions and for the physician to figure out what's going on. From the physician perspective, we're going to go through your history And we're even going to go through history such as your intercourse history. If there's pain with intercourse, we're going to ask you things like your periods, the timing. We will even ask sensitive things such as, do you have problems getting erections or do you have problems ejaculating in the vagina? At times, it can get very personal where we start asking about hair bearing areas and whether you develop dark hairs between your breast or on your breast. The point is, it's a pretty invasive history. It's not something you usually talk to most people about, so it can be a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes doctors even have to talk about partners in your past to find out if there's a history of infertility. One of the most important things for the doctor is going to find out your menstrual history. So having documentation or just having notes on your history of your period, specifically when each one started and when each one ends, knowing if there's any pain with your periods, or any irregular bleeding, such as spotting between the periods. The most important thing is trying to figure out how long you've been trying. Most people don't consider having intercourse as trying. They feel like you have to have intercourse at a specific time, and you really don't. As long as you're having intercourse twice a week, you can get pregnant. So one of the things they'll ask you is, well, but how long have you been having intercourse without protection? Even though you may come in saying, oh, well, we've been trying for one year, you may have been technically trying for three years. And so they're going to ask you those questions to kind of really pinpoint how, how significant is this infertility? Sometimes asking your parents to find out a little bit more about their, if they had infertility, you should really be thinking that if, let's say, your brothers and sisters are years and years apart, you might want to ask your parents, hey, why did you wait nine years to have another sibling? They might have had infertility and you might learn something and bringing that to the appointment can help. Also knowing about any family members with things that may not be infertility, but are infertility related, such as having endometriosis in the family, polycystic ovarian syndrome in the family, and the history of recurrent miscarriages in the family. All those are very important, and if you know those, it's great to get that information to your doctor. Now, sometimes before the first visit, or even when you come to the visit, they're going to have you fill up paperwork. I would definitely recommend getting to the appointment early. If you come late to your appointment, not only do you lose some of the time you would have had with the doctors, but if there's paperwork, you can end up spending a lot of time doing paperwork before you see the doctor, and again, that eats into your time. So now that we've talked about 
what to do to prepare for the visit, let's talk about what to expect. So as I discussed, one of the biggest thing is going to be history. And that's really to figure out what's going on. Once they do this comprehensive medical history, then the next thing is they may do a physical exam. Now, not every fertility doctor is going to do a physical exam that day. Sometimes they may want to wait until your period comes. Others may not do one at all and just do a consultation on that visit. But be prepared that they may want to do a physical exam. They may want to do a breast exam as well as a pelvic exam. And for some women, I know these spontaneous exams are not really wanted because you weren't prepared for them. And so that's why I let you know to be prepared. It's not very common, but there are some fertility doctors that will also evaluate the men and do a physical exam on them, checking their testicle size and checking if they have a vas deferens. Rarely does that happen these days, but there are some older doctors who still do that. I think one of the most important things is that be open with your doctor. Don't be afraid to talk about things, even if things you don't really like to talk about. They may be important. And so if you had a partner and had a pregnancy in the past or even an abortion, it's important to let your doctor know that because those things then let the doctor know what to order next. The next step is then ordering tests. And so based off of that history, your doctor is going to order tests. And there's certain ones that are just very common, such as a semen analysis, a hysterosalpingogram. And then there's other tests, such as hormonal testing. There's also testing to look at the uterus. And they may even recommend tests such as genetic carrier screening, where you're looking for things like cystic fibrosis and other diseases that may run in your family. And they may recommend that to help prevent a child being born with that disease that may run in both your families that you don't know about. Most clinics will have you just call the first day of your period. And that way you can kind of do all the testing at the same time versus getting one test today, then waiting another day to get it. You can get it all done in, let's say, a week. Now, there are some clinics that will actually do everything that day. So they'll bring you in. It doesn't matter when your cycle is on that first appointment. They'll actually go and draw your blood, drawing an AMH level, which can look at your egg quality on that day. They do an ultrasound. And they just basically do everything that they can that day to make it very fast. Not many clinics do that, but that is something I have heard about. And so that could be expected. At our clinic, we don't do that. We usually wait till your period. But if someone's in the right time of their cycle, I may just do an ultrasound on the day of the visit. And that's because maybe I think they're ovulating. I want to verify their ovulation. Although I'm not going in depth these tests, I have done podcasts on these tests. And so you should be able to hear a podcast on the different tests that we do. In the end, keep in mind that your doctor is going to test that you need. Sometimes you don't need certain tests because it won't affect you. Such as some people may have their fallopian tubes removed. So there's no reason to do a hysterosalpingogram because we already know the tubes are blocked. Now, what you're expecting at this visit is something you probably won't get. And that's a diagnosis. Now, sometimes it's very obvious. And the doctor can say, I know what's going wrong. I think it's this, but we still have to verify everything. But... I want to set your expectations that you're probably not going to get an absolute diagnosis on that first visit because really no testing has been done. Again, sometimes it's very obvious and we can tell you, but there are other times that we're going to tell you what we think might be going on. And what you'll do is you'll have those tests done. And then after those tests are done, you'll follow back up with your doctor and then they can go over those results and they can tell you what your diagnosis is. Sometimes it comes back and it's female. Sometimes it's a male infertility problem. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's even unexplained. Now, when you follow up with your doctor, you're not going to just talk about the results of the test, but you're going to talk about them. What's the next steps? And what that means is, what are the treatment options? Now, just because there are options doesn't mean we're going to recommend one over the other. So, for example, they may talk about artificial inseminations, which are where we inject the sperm in the uterus, or they may even talk about IVF. And sometimes they'll give you the choice and say you can do either one of those. And they'll talk to you about the risk and benefits of each one. But sometimes there isn't a choice. For example, I was unfortunate enough to have very severe sperm. So we had one option. That was IVF. We were told about possibly seeing a urologist and maybe they can prove my numbers, which we chose not to do because we basically wanted to be pregnant at that point. But in the future, I actually did the surgery and it didn't improve anything. So I made the right choice. But the point is, Your doctor is going to go over those and tell you about those different test results, what treatment options are there, and then what you'll do is figure out what's best for you. Not everyone's going to pick the same treatment with the exact same diagnosis. 
And that's because some people might have coverage that pays for their treatment. Some people may have other things they desire, such as maybe gender selection. And so they may choose IVF over artificial inseminations because they want to pick the gender. One of the last things of the appointment is your questions. And that's important. Bring your questions, write them down. There's nothing wrong with that. It is very possible your doctor may address every single question that you have during that appointment. But it doesn't hurt to have them written down because at that moment, you usually will forget. So write them down, have them because those questions are what are causing your stress. And having those questions answered can help increase your mental well being because now you're not worried about certain things. If you're worried that you're going to never get pregnant, ask that question. Say, Am I going to get pregnant someday? Do I need to be worried? Those are fair questions to ask. Don't be afraid to ask them. Fertility is an extremely emotional journey. And it's important that if it's causing stress in your relationship, to definitely talk to your doctor about that, to get resources. So then that way you can help manage your stress and those emotional challenges. Some clinics even have support groups. Um, our current clinic, we, what we do is we actually have a Facebook that's only just for our um, patients. And so that allows them to then, you know, ask questions on there and with people that, you know, are going through the same experience, same place. And it's been very helpful for many of our patients, but there are many things online that you can use and talk to your doctor. They may have something like us where there's a support group. In the end, that will be what your appointment will be like. I wish I could tell you that you get a baby on that appointment day, but you don't. And unfortunately, you don't get the diagnosis. But you do get to find out a little bit about what the doctor thinks is going wrong, what the potential diagnosis will be, you know what tests you're going to be doing, and then when you follow up, usually within a month, you'll be able to talk about those results and come up with a plan. I personally think the most important part of that visit are your questions, because those questions being answered is what reduces the stress. And that's the thing I didn't have, because I didn't see a doctor first, I did my test first. And that created a little bit of stress. For those of you who are already in the fertility journey, this may not be as helpful of an episode, but for people who are thinking about seeing a fertility doctor or want to prepare, this is a great episode for you to learn about what to expect so you can be more prepared. So if you have friends who are thinking about doing fertility, recommend this episode to them. It may really benefit them. As always, if you ever have any topics that you want me to do, send me a message either on Facebook or TBFT at NewDirectionFertility.com, and I'm more than happy to do those episodes. Until next week, this is Talk About Fertility Tuesday.